Good evening, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. That depends on where you are hearing me from. I have made a, a Yoruba talk around last week after being off social media for a long time. And when I made that Yoruba message, I actually did not complete it or I was actually missing something. And I thought I would come back and make a simple English message. This time around, the message is not just for my Yoruba, my authentic Yoruba people. It will be to the Yoruba people, I mean the authentic ones, the Igbo, the metric belters, and the rest of other extractions that are present in that contraption called Nigeria. Once again, I want to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Omou Milawa. I'm a Yoruba girl. My parents hail from Lagos. My father, Alaji, is a Muslim. He was a Muslim before he passed on. He's from Isaliko. From the Eletu Odibo Shifting Sea family. My mother is also from Lagos. She came from the Molaki family in Elogbo in central Lagos. So I'm a bona fide Lagosian. Therefore, anything that affects Lagos affects me and will affect my children's children. So I have the right to speak on issues that concern my Yoruba people, my Lagosian people, and I have the courage to come out and say it, even if some people will not buy it. My friends, my family, Yoruba people, Igbo people, Middle Belters, Efiki, Shekiri, Edoz, lend me your ears. Lend me your ears. I understand there's going to be election. Have you asked yourself, my real authentic Yoruba Igbo Middle Belters, what kind of election is going to take place in that extraction? When everything in Nigeria is not working. Nothing is working. What kind of election are you going to have when the Constitution, 1999 Constitution, has 68 exclusives? And let me explain what this means to you. This exclusive means that Every item of that 68 exclusives, you cannot talk about it, you cannot argue about it, you cannot debate about it. It's only the full and ease that will deliberate upon it. And you say you have one Nigeria. How can you be one Nigeria when we cannot argue about anything that concerns the totality of our destiny? And yet, intelligentsias, politicians, senators, the lawmakers who are intelligent enough, if they're really intelligent and have some wisdom around them, they are intelligent, they have understanding, they are not functional illiterates. They want to go on election whose laws and rules and policy will be predicated on that 1999 constitution that forbids them to talk about 68 exclusives which includes if the federal government owes you and they don't want to pay you so be it if they find you guilty and you want to probably 
go back to court, they may say no. And you cannot discuss about it. You cannot argue about it. You cannot do anything about it. My people, except of course, and please don't take it that I'm, I'm insulting you. Except anyone is stupid and cannot read the handwriting on the wall. That's when you would think you should vote, you should go out there and vote. Who are the people that are coming out for these presidential elections? Rogues. Thieves. The elders that they call themselves elders, they're not elders, they're rulers. Because they don't want any good for the common man. They want to turn the country, they've already turned the country into an impoverished country of lack and poverty. We have no good schools. Mothers, listen, your children do not have good schools. Father, listen, you have no good jobs. Your children are not being provided with jobs. They have BSc, they have masters, they have PhD, and yet they cannot get a job. And yet you still want to drag yourself, being dragged, being disgraced by this hegemonic government to come and have another election. And who do you think will come out and vote for these rogues? These treasury looters. And I'm going to be mentioning names. Let me tell you. I have only one life to live. This year, I will be 66 years old. I am a grandmother. Whatever will happen, will happen. I'm not afraid of any one of you. I know those of you that are hearing, they will say, who is this girl? I'm just an ordinary girl. Or ordinary woman. But I'm a Nigerian. And I'm nationalistic. And I will not sit down in a foreign country where I see light 24-7. Where there is water. Where I'm being paid a pension. And they've never owed me a pension. Even before I get a pension, they were paying me money. For disability because I was sick. People worked 30, 35 years in that contraption called Nigeria and they have not received their pension. Some of them died while waiting for the pension. And all these the Dinatus, the Chief Tumbus, the Abobakus, you are out there campaigning, championing somebody to come and become. A presidential candidate. Which the full and you will see control. Because let me tell you. If you don't know. Since the Republic in 1963. The Yorubas. The Igbos. Have never been. Ministers. Of significant position. Or institution. The only thing that they put you. Yorubas and Igbos. They've said it. They said you know how to speak grammar. To Renshi, they make you ministers of information or minister of culture because they know you need to, you like to brag about your tradition, about your culture. Full and you don't give a crap about all that. But they control NMPC, they control the port, they control the air, air, airways. Everything where money is, they control it. And they lord it over you. Not only do they control it, they take your money that they got, that they get from the south, and they take it to the north. And do you have an opportunity to go and say in the north? They say if you don't leave the north, you will lose your lives. And then you start packing again, leaving all your property, your investment in the north. And they have now gone... Beyond the Republican now. They do not only take it to the north. They are taking it to the Nigeria Republic. Because a lot of them are from the Nigeria Republic. Abasha was from Nigeria. Your current president, Buhari, his father is a Nigeria. His mother is a Kanuri. And yet all of you want to die for one Nigeria. Except 
A lot of you need psychiatric examination. If you can sit down and think about what I'm saying, you will realize that on that election day, all of you should go and tear your, your ticket or whatever you call it and sit down at your house. If Tinubu wants to go, go out and all the Dijinriatus, the, the Abobakus, the ass leakers, his sympathizers, let them go and do it. But I want to tell you, God is not a niche. And Mr. Tinubu, Ahmed Tinumbu, you are not old enough to be my daddy. You are not old enough to be my father. If you are 80, I'm 66. You couldn't have had me at 14. You might be an uncle, age mate. That's all you are. I am telling you as a Nigerian bona fide Yoruba woman, you are a disgrace. You have made all the money that anybody can make. And yet there's no significant thing that you have done in Lagos or in any Yoruba state. You use over 30 billion of our money that you got from the South to bring Buhari in.